what's going on? Move the mouse here in the PlayStation 4 edition of City Skylines. Uh, those of you that are familiar with my channel may know that I've played a lot on the Xbox version and PC. I also own the Switch. This is the last one that I had not played. So I figured I'd start a brand new build. We'll be unlocking all the uniques, the trophies, and we'll be doing it with the vanilla game, at least for the time being. It's available on PS Now, so I figured I'd grab it since I have it already and uh, get started on a new build. I did a little test build, so I unlocked the most basic of achievements already. You'll notice in the top right, After Dark and Match Day DLCs are installed technically. They're just part of the game, so if you don't have those, I don't know what to tell you. We're gonna start a new map, and for this one, I'm gonna go back to Foggy Hills, one of the first maps that I built on. It was a map called Springwood, so uh, we'll be doing right-hand traffic because left-hand makes my head explode. If you don't know what I'm talking about, try doing opposite of what you're used to and managing uh, in-game traffic can be pretty tough. We're not gonna be using any of the cheats, but I do have day-night cycle and dynamic weather turned off. Just makes things easier to see. Uh, you'll notice the panel on the right has some info on the map we're about to build on. It has all of the resources and all of the outside connections. So we'll be able to test out everything from the built-in game. Let's go ahead and start our build. And I'll be walking through all the basics. If you're returning here, you've heard me say a lot of this stuff before, but if you're new and just getting started, hopefully this will give you some tips and tricks for how to build. We'll be starting things out very basic. Uh, swing the camera around over, over here. <laughs> And uh, we want to get hooked in to this highway system. But before we spend any money, let's pause the game, click the left stick in. Anytime we're building stuff and we're paying to upkeep it. And if we don't have anybody living here, nobody's paying us taxes. So we don't want that. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build a real tiny little piece of road. Because when we do, that unlocks the one-way roads. So now that we've done that, let's come down... That should be enough. That should be fine. And just because these highways are a little bit uneven, I'm gonna snap to this node so that these will end at just the same distance. And then we can connect this. Now, those roads are backwards and down here at the end is just a dead end, so we can one-way connect to fix that. I'm gonna hold triangle, switch to my change direction tool, and actually I can keep the button pressed, I forgot, uh, and just work my way back up the road there. Now we're gonna wanna provide a way uh, to either side of the highway because we're gonna separate out our industry from our residential. So in this case, I wanna go into my straight road tool. I'm gonna come down to these nodes here. And in fact, let me see here. Let's, let's space things out with the regular road tool. So I'm gonna come out and leave two squares of space if it will let me. See right there? And I'm gonna push up on the D-pad once, which should be high enough. And that way we only have pillars on the edge of those road segments. And that'll give us plenty of room to upgrade these roads later on to a highway. It'll be a little bit wider. We want this to come back down and I'm gonna do that in 12 squares of space. So the big line's 10, 11, 12. If we go any further, it snaps down a little funny. If we go much shorter, it becomes too steep and we can't even build it. So 12 is a nice little sweet spot if you have the default elevation step, it's called. Now, if you want to adjust things a little bit more fine-tuned, you can hold triangle, head on over to snapping options, and change this one over here. It changes how high or uh, how far the road moves when you're doing that up and down on the D-pad. You can go in the ground too. But for right now, that should be nice and straight and perpendicular to our highway, or uh, at least for now, our, our two lane roads. If we wanna upgrade this segment, we could. So same way we did with the change direction, hold triangle, go to upgrade with a different road already selected. We can upgrade this to a four lane road with a divider in the middle. And let's come out Maybe maybe 20 more. Let's see what the hill looks like there. That should be okay. And then I'll come out as far as we can. We'll call it quits right there. And we'll build a few roads off of this, not too, too many. So what we want to do here is maybe skip an intersection 
we'll build down most of the way towards the highway. We don't want roads that are going to carry a lot of traffic to have a lot of intersections. We want people to move down them, get to the other part of the city they want to go to and then turn in. So uh, what I'm going to do here is use up some of this space with some side streets. Come on. So let's do something like that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the uh, two lane roads are not quite as wide as those four lane roads. It may seem obvious, uh, but you're going to want to look at your spacing. You can basically zone back four units from any road is where you can have buildings. So um, if you want to leave a little bit of a space for, you know, things like a pedestrian path, you don't necessarily have to put your zoning on top of one another. You can you know, leave a little bit of area there. So you have room to build in things like pedestrian path or maybe even just some of the larger buildings. Now, these intersections will get a little bit more frequent, but I didn't want to have one too close to uh, where we were there. I think it's okay to connect this through. I think I went one unit short there, so let's do that. There we go. That works. So I don't want to go too crazy on our money, but that gives us a nice little grid to start with. Let's go back over to our four lane, whoops, our four lane roads. And what do we do? We came out two more. We can keep this kind of, um, you know, just, just so that it's not totally symmetrical. Let's come out 30 units, three big lines before we enter into uh, some smaller roads, which will carry traffic into this industrial area that we're going to build over here. In this case, I'm just using that circle to see where the zoning is. It's basically showing me like how far away from that little uh, center click we're going to be able to build off the road. And I'm just making it so that we're using up as much of this space as possible. So if I go right there, that should, there we go. And delete that excess and we could even you know, carry this down through there. We don't want to connect this one up though. We're going to kind of force all the traffic in and out of the zone through that intersection right there. Oh, you know, I'm I'm a fool. So let's let's knock this back one block because we didn't build an exit off the highway. Let's do that first before we worry about cramming in neighborhoods and stuff. So we're going to come from two blocks away, two uh, of these nodes, basically. And I'm going to come right to there and then I'm going to go two nodes away on the other side. Now, this is a very basic diamond intersection, nothing fancy at all. And in fact, we're using two lane roads, not the best option. In fact, a terrible option. We want to switch to one way. So I'm going to go to the upgrade tool and upgrade these. Now, the problem here is that uh, this one's facing the wrong way. So let's upgrade them all first. The one ways will actually go in the direction that you draw. So because I drew the road this way, it's going to kind of throw us off there. We can just change the direction on that. We want this to be a way off the highway and immediately across the intersection, a way back on. We can, of course, turn right to go to an uh, industry. We can go left to come over here into the residential and same thing over here. We want this to be an exit straight across. We want to be an entrance. So this is a big inefficient intersection that we will be changing later. Don't expect to support a large amount of traffic on this. Same thing with that cloverleaf up there. We'll talk about in a later episode why that is such a terrible intersection, but we'll build uh, some upgrades later on. Once we unlock highway pieces, we don't have those just yet. We've got a Get a population of 2,400 before we get access to those. Okay, so I've certainly overbuilt our industry. I don't have a lot of uh, residential over here now. Let's see if we can get a couple more, a couple more blocks in. So from here, we'll come out 10 units. And then maybe we'll do something like that. 
just so we've got a bunch of crazy spots we can slot houses into. Um, I'm not gonna keep going though, because I I don't wanna don't wanna overdo this. Getting a little low on money. I definitely overbuilt uh, the industry up. Not really any point in, in building on there just yet. But we're gonna go all the way, um, filling in kind of everything over there. We will undo some of this. I'm gonna switch to the selection tool. Anytime you see me bring up that that radial wheel that's holding triangle on PlayStation. So let's do that. In fact, let's just, we'll go four units away for clearance. Uh, and assuming we're gonna continue this road through here, I'm gonna just zone off basically where you can see across the street. If we build another road here, it's gonna at least take up that much room. So I don't want too many businesses uh, moving in where they're gonna get kicked out. So we've got roads, we've got some basic zones. And in fact, we can zone some industry over here. The, uh, the three different colors, the green is where people move in. The blue are businesses that will support them. And of course, where they will work and support the businesses. And then industry supports the businesses with goods to sell. I feel like I said businesses a lot there. Apologies. So in any event, this is a decent start from a zoning perspective. We're not going to build on this road. We're going to force all the traffic to come in here. And in fact, if we don't want trucks turning in and out on this street, we can dezone just this last square and that will force any shops that open up. I said shops instead of businesses. Any shops that open up, uh, industries that open up, will will have the you know the front doors where the trucks are coming and going on uh, those side streets. So just little ways you can minimize some of the traffic and, and where it occurs. Okay, so what what do we got going here though? We've got roads and zoning. We don't have power and water, and those are the last two things that we need to figure out. Where we do that though is a good question. So can we get an eight over here? If we get See, we have to put it down so far. Let's go up here because the eight seems pretty available. In fact, we'll start way. We'll start as close as we can to the city where we have uh, uh, eight megawatts. The darker, I, sh I should say, the darker the blue, it's, I mean, it's really dark here, um, is more power. So if I put it down here, it costs me the same, but I'm getting a lot less electricity out of it. So look for those dark spots for uh, windmills if you're going to go that route. We've got to get power at least a little bit closer to where people are going to be living. We'll figure it out a little bit better than that, and then we'll figure out what to do over this way a little bit later. Um, water. Let's keep things simple. We'll do a water tower here in the center of our map. It does cause noise pollution, though, so I guess we don't want it too close to industry but we don't want it too close to where people live either. So we'll start there and we're gonna switch over to pipes and I'm gonna kind of follow the roads here because that's where we need the support anyways. So let's do this. We'll bring water all the way across. Now, when it comes to the cross pipes, we can go 440 for this tiny little bit of overlap to make sure things are covered. If you want to save every penny you can, you can go 460 and you will have, let's not waste any here, you'll have less than a square of missed space. So you'll have this tiny little spot where technically it, it's covered because it's both pipes are covering it. So 440, 460, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go so far as to bulldoze this, so I just wanted to prove a point because it, it bothers me. Uh, and now I have to reset all the way back to there to make sure that I'm doing 440. There we go. So that should be okay. And what can we do over this way? That's good enough for me. Now, if you want redundancy and protection from natural disasters, if you have that installed, definitely cross connect and, and hook up pipes in a couple different ways. In any event, we wanna get this pipe network connected into the water tower. That's how we're gonna get water rather than uh, pick it up from the river for now. 
because what we are going to do with the river is dump our sewage in there instead. And you could do both. You could pick up your water as long as you're doing it upstream. Those arrows show the direction of the water. Make sure if uh, you have both sewage and intake, that the intake is up here, not down here. Otherwise, you're going to be drinking sewage. People will get sick. And this is actually a really common problem that people run into is they might be polluting their water. Now, this one seems very obvious. If you put a water pump like this or a water tower down and then pollute the ground that it's sitting on, that's another way that the water can get polluted and cause people to get very sick. So uh, pretty common problem for players that are starting out. So keep in mind those two troubleshooting tips. Make sure you're upstream with intake. Make sure your ground is not polluted if you're doing anything um, with like a, a water reservoir, uh, water, what is it? Water tower. So uh, water, electricity, roads, zoning, time to hit play. And in fact, we'll hold it down and we'll go three times speed to, uh, to make things happen just a little bit faster. In the bottom right of the screen, you see the demand that you have, and these really build off of one another. So at first, uh, we're gonna have to get power over to the water pump, unfortunately, because people are going to complain that they don't have, that they don't have water because it's not getting powered. So this will spread power into the blue bubble and houses spread power to other houses. Uh, oh, let's go in and we didn't connect the sewage. So that has to be connected with a pipe. That also has to be connected to electricity. So I think while we still have money, I'm gonna pause it real quick. I'm gonna do a very temporary fix over here. We'll get just enough power to power uh, the sewage for now. And then how do we get electric over there? That should do the trick. Probably didn't need to go 90 degree, 90 degree bend, but it works. Um, let's come over the highway here. Like so to get that all connected. I think I started to say with the zoning, you're gonna have a ton of residential at first. People wanna move in. They're gonna need jobs, primarily commercial. That's when the blue upticks. And then those businesses, the commercial businesses need goods to sell, which they get from industry, which is when we get that um, yellow line or orange line upticking. Now, later on in the game, we'll unlock high density versions of these. So uh, you'll have apartment buildings instead of houses, uh, giant shops instead of little restaurants, and offices instead of industry. And offices don't pollute. Uh, they don't have a separate zone color, though, so keep that in mind. Uh, they do. They have a separate zone color. They don't have a separate demand color. You can meet industry demand with office, is what I meant to say. So uh, right now, we're losing money, but as more and more people move in, we're losing less and less. So in the bottom, towards the left, you'll see our overall budget's around $4,000, or, or our treasury, probably, I should say. Uh, we're negative 611 negative 596 so it's getting closer to zero as more and more people move in we may need to spend a little bit of money real quick uh i'm gonna have a business move out unfortunately um it's 10 units away if you want to be right on top of one another roads wise but because it is a, uh, a four lane road that we're coming off of i'm going 11 units away to get that zoning to step right on top of one another Let's look at water real quick. Yeah, they're going to be complaining. Need 440 a pipe. And we'll do just enough. We have $9. It's crazy. So let's fill this in with what we can so that we get some more people moving in. I didn't mean to do that all the way down to the road like that. But it works. They're going to hate living probably this close to the... Uh, the windmill. Word's still out, but uh, some say they cause cancer. Pretty sure that's not the case. Um, but be careful. Be careful out there. Uh, this is a little funky in here. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna fill all that in later on. We're gonna really build things up to the highway and make it nice and densely packed here. In fact, 
Odd little cutouts like this later on can be cool little spots we can build like a sports stadium or some of the larger unique buildings that will unlock. Kind of give them their own little own little area. Um, not that we would next to a small residential neighborhood, but this isn't going to be a small residential neighborhood forever. We'll, uh, we'll be building that up, growing the city towards the center. And this is actually going to be kind of our, our larger downtown area. Uh, where are we trying to get to? Well, you can see, hey, we're in the positive. We're making money now. We're not broke any longer. If we um, from if we back out all the way, we're not in any tools and we hit the triangle button, we can go into milestones and see what uh, we need for population wise to unlock uh, the next set of progressions for our city. So um, every map's gonna be a little bit different. So don't take these numbers as something fixed. The game didn't change. If you're on a different map, you might have different requirements. The number of people that you need to move in to get uh, to certain areas, certain objectives. We'll be unlocking that in just a little bit when we get to 440 and we'll talk about all those things this episode because um, it's all part of starting your city. In the background, while the city's growing, you can see we've got some problems happening. We don't have enough electricity, unfortunately. So hopefully we can squeeze by because um, we wasted a bit of money on the initial part of the build. But I think we can get there. I think we can get to 440 people. We still have some residential zoning that hasn't filled out. We don't have commercial zoning just yet. We have some spots we could squeeze it in, uh, but it's not super important. What we got to do is we got to get power over there. So maybe we can do this a little cheaply. Cheekily is doing this. We'll borrow some power from this windmill which is being underutilized. It's only powering sewage right now. That got us up into the green enough that we should have no problem getting 11 more people. Never mind, there they are, 440 population. What have we unlocked? Taxes and loans, garbage, healthcare, education. Let's talk about those things real quick. So if we're back out here in the main view and we hold triangle, we can go over to economy. And here we can see taxes there's a sweet spot. I won't go into too much detail, but 12% is a really cool spot. If you go much lower, you're leaving money on the table. If you go much higher, people can complain and move out. Some people say you can do 13%. Um, you can go higher in some cases, but there's a point where they'll just complain and, and not like it. 12% is a pretty good spot. Uh, so taxes, but we also unlocked the budget panel and loans. Let's take out a loan real quick. You can pay it back at any time to reborrow it. So need a little bit of money and say we owe 10,000, we can pay it back and then borrow that money back. Uh, as we progress, we'll unlock larger and larger loans. But honestly, by the time I get to that 200,000 loan, I usually don't need it. Uh, budgets wise, you can affect how much is happening for a certain city service. So just a moment ago, when we were running out of electricity, I could have bumped the budget up. So we'll spend more on electricity because we can't afford, you know, a power plant upgrade yet. But we can't afford to push those plants a little bit harder for a little bit more electricity. It's not the most efficient way to do things in the long run. Ideally, you want more running at less of a percentage of anything. Um, that's going to be a better way to save you money in the long run. But you can adjust budgets for all different services here. And Triangle sets you into day or night mode. So do keep that in mind. There are separate budgets for day and night. I'm playing in day mode only. It's easier to see on YouTube, but if you're playing day and night modes, make sure if you're say running out of electricity at night, that could be because everybody's turning their lights on and uh, a way to compensate for that might be to just crank up the budget a little bit at nighttime for electricity. So uh, budgets, taxes, loans, we've talked about all that. We've got a little bit of money to spend, but we've got to spend it on garbage, healthcare, and education. So garbage first, we'll find a spot up here and notice that big purple circle, that's where it's gonna get polluted. So please don't move this in to your residential neighborhood like that. It's gonna make an awful lot of people sick. In fact, don't even move it here because it still could affect these people. So we're gonna throw it way over here. In fact, we can get it, geez, we can get it all the way on this back block. I kind of like that. Let's do that for now. And uh, right away, you'll notice it sends out garbage trucks. There they go. They're going out. They're going out two different directions. So I guess some of them are picking up garbage from the industry area. They'll go out, trucks will fill up, and then they'll have to come back. Dump will eventually fill up. So later on, we'll be able to use an incinerator 
we can empty the dumps or we can just use the incinerators as our dumps and just burn it. Uh, if you have the Green Cities DLC, you've got some recycling options and other things you can do, uh, which is nice. But for right now, we've got the bare bones base mechanics of the game. So landfill it is. That is garbage. We need to worry about healthcare and education. So let's come over here. We're going to have to move somebody out. But that's what you get for moving in on my main street. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Let's move uh, this person out. And we'll do a little clinic right here on the corner. And then let's do the same thing for school. So the, the principles behind these are pretty similar. Like they have a, a service coverage. I'm going to pause it real quick because we've got power, power complaints. They have an area of coverage. And you'll notice what they cover effectively is in the green. It's kind of where the happiness bubble is. If you're talking about an ambulance getting to a sick person or especially a fire getting to a, a fire getting to a fire, a firefighter getting to a fire in time to put it out. Uh, it's going to be very important that those roads are generally green. It's not, you know, the answer 100% of the time. Gray roads doesn't mean it's impossible to get to. It just means it's going to take them a little bit of longer time, a little bit of longer, a little bit of longer time to get there. Um, let's put this. I'm going to do this. We're going to move a bunch of people out, unfortunately. We'll put the elementary school kind of on our main street. And these will zone back in. There will be people living there. Um, we've got electricity problems and we've got enough money that we should sort this out for the time being. We're going to have to use a lot of these, unfortunately. So I'm going to put them for now as close to one another as possible. And that should increase our power into the green. And we'll get limited returns each time. So we'll have to keep doing that. Do we get out in front of it? I think we have garbage, healthcare, education. We've done all those things. So why don't we get out in front of our next power complaint, which is probably going to happen at some point. Um, as we progress, we'll unlock more areas. Only nine on console, so choose wisely. Um, if you have mods on PC, you can do 25 or all 81 tiles. Pretty cool stuff there, but we'll do the best that we can fitting the city into this shape. And um, I think I've got a, a, a pretty good idea for how to, to build this one out. I built a big city on it before. Uh, not that I was super happy with it. Looking back on it, actually, in retrospect, it was ugly as get out. But, um, you know, hey, we're, we're going to do a better job this time and uh, and apply what we've learned in other builds. And since we're doing it legit, we are going to have temporary placeholders like this. This is not what I am saying is the best intersection that you should be doing. It's just a nice, really simple, easy way to carve a space out. Uh, we'll tighten it up later and then fill in the dead space. We'll 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 find a way to make it all work. Uh, but for now, that's a pretty good spot to take a break. Let's take a look at our next milestone is at 900. We'll unlock a new area, districts, policies, loans, unique buildings, all kinds of stuff that we will talk about on the next episode, including our first firehouse, which is very important. Stay tuned to find out why, or I guess I'll just spoil it for you. My maps love the burst in the flames. So, uh, to play us out, if you will, I'm going to hit the um, whatever the big touch button is called on PlayStation. I don't know. I'm an Xbox guy. You hit the big button or you hit the back button. And I know it's not called back on Xbox. It's called something. It's called select. Start and select. Nintendo settled that in the 80s. I don't know why we had to change the names. But anyways, you hit that button. You bring up this camera mode. Uh, from there, I'm going to hold Y and go in a cinematic camera. It's going to take us around a little flight around our city. Um, it's built off of the roads and the things that are there. So it's only got so much to pivot off of. So give me a break this early on if it the, the cameras, uh, cinematics are a little bit funny, but uh, it'll get better and better as we go. Hopefully you will be along for the ride. If you enjoyed uh, the video today, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are so greatly appreciated. If you are new here, subscribe for more. I'm going to be trying to build this one up. I needed something different, reset switch. PlayStation seemed like a good opportunity to do that because now I can unlock achievements and unlock the unique buildings again without having to reset my status across my entire game, which was my only option really on the Xbox side. I, I mean, I guess I could have spun up a free account and, and just, you know, uh, that aside. Anyways, we're here. We're in the PlayStation. We're building. It's something new. Hope you're enjoying. If you'd like to support the channel, links to that and lots of other things in the description down below. But until the next one, when we'll talk about the next milestone and all those other important things for your city. Until then, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.